Good morning and Shabbat Shalom, dear congregants of Beth Tikva. Welcome to the second season of the written Torah, Book of Shmot. As we read this week's Parsha, we are reminded of the powerful story of the Israelites' enslavement in Egypt and their journey toward freedom. It teaches us many important lessons about redemption, leadership, and trust in God. The starting point for Moshe's journey as a leader and a prophet is when he encounters God in the wilderness, talking to him from a burning bush. It takes more than a chapter to retell the conversation between God and Moshe. It is Exodus chapter 3, verse 6 to Exodus chapter 4, verse 17, and tells the story of how Moshe is called by God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and to the promised land. This passage is rich with meaning and provides many important lessons for us as we navigate our own lives. God appears and says, I have marked well the plight of my people in Egypt and have heeded their outcry because of their taskmasters. Yes, I am mindful of their suffering. I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and spacious land, a land following with milk and honey. But Moshe, instead of being happy and thankful that God gives Israelites an opportunity to survive and gain freedom, says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and free the Israelites from Egypt? That is quite a strange reaction. Wasn't Moshe the one who cared for his brothers and sisters so much that he even killed an Egyptian? But suddenly here, he appears to be very hesitant. So God continues talking to him and God said, I will be with you. That shall be your sign that it was I who sent you. God is confirming that he is the God of his fathers and he is known by you, hey, vav, hey. And then he says, they will listen to you. Then you shall go with the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt. And God gives more instructions on what should be done and said. But Moshe is still not convinced. What if they don't believe me and do not listen to me, but say, God did not appear to you. Then God gives Moshe signs, such as rod that turns into snake and water turning into blood. But no, Moshe is still hesitant. He says, please, O oh my Lord, I have never been a man of words. I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. And then God reminds Moshe that God is the creator of everything. He says, who gives human speech? Who makes them dumb or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, God? Now go, and I will be with you as you speak and will instruct your way to say. God is repeating the same thing over and over again. I will be with you. I will tell you what to do. The other people will believe you. And what Moshe says, he says, please, O Lord, make someone else your agent. Here, finally, God loses his patience, becomes very angry, and promises that, okay, Aaron will help you to accomplish the task of liberating Israelites from Egypt. Some commentators say that Moshe was a very humble person, the most humble in the entire Torah. But some might say that he had quite an audacity to speak to God this way. I mean, God appears to you and gives you a noble task that can save the lives of thousands of people. And you say... Um, can someone else do that? I imagine how Rabbi Grover gives me a task and say, and I say to him, it's not going to work. And he says, don't worry, I will be with you. I will help you. <laughs> and I reply, can someone else do that? <laughs> I I'll probably lose my job. Thankfully, that didn't happen to Moshe, and he did bring people <laughs> to the promised land eventually. But why Moshe behaving in such strange way? Rabbi Michelle Misage, I do not know how to pronounce her name, so I hope she will never see this sermon online. So Rabbi Michelle Misage writes, 
it's intriguing that Moshe and God have such an intense connection at the burning bush. And then when God asks for Moshe's help in freeing the Israelites from slavery, the last thing that Moshe wants to do is show up and help God. Moshe comes up with three excuses that parallel three great human fears. It takes a lot of convincing on God's part to put Moshe at ease, build his confidence, and get him on board. So what are these three uh, human fears. Our first great fear is that even those who we deeply love and care about won't ever really get us. Did you ever think, no one really understands me, they don't understand what I'm going through, if I tell them how I feel, they just won't understand, they won't believe me. So Masha says similarly, they won't listen to me, they won't believe me, even though he really cares for Israelites. The second fear is, I do not have the skills to achieve the task given to me. Other people are so much smarter, taller, prettier, well-educated, uh, financially more secure than I am. Who am I to take a leadership, leadership position? And Moshe says, I don't have skills to talk to people and convince them. The third fear is, when put to the test, I don't think I can actually do what others want of me. I'm scared I won't fulfill my destiny in life, be the person I'm meant to be, change for the better, even leap up to all my own hopes and dreams. Moshe says, let someone else do it, not me. These are three great fears. Fear of not being understood, fear of not having enough skills, and fear of failing a task. And these are real hindrances in our lives. They stop us from achieving our personal goals and from making the world a better place. And it might seem weird that Moshe expresses these fears in front of God, the Almighty, instead of trusting him immediately. But by being honest and actually talking to God about his fears, Moshe gives us really great example of how to overcome these fears in our lives. This is a lesson from Moshe. His fears were real, and they were actually supported by his life experience. He already tried to help his people, but instead he just saw them fighting with each other. And when he asked these people, why are you fighting? They said, who made you chief and ruler over us? So Moshe's fear that people won't listen to him wasn't baseless. He was also a failure as a prince of Egypt. He grew up as a, basically a grandson of Pharaoh, but had to run away into the wilderness. He wasn't able to utilize a position in Egyptian society to help Israelites. And he didn't even become a wealthy Egyptian, at least. So all his fears were actually quite rational. So too, our fears always have some underlying reasons even if they seem rational. So I have a very bizarre fear that that's a lot of difficulty to my life. Um, I am afraid to make phone calls. It terrifies me, I, believe me. Uh, as you can imagine, rabbis need to make quite a lot of phone calls, so it's not the most useful quality of mine. I'm not afraid to speak in front of hundreds of people, but if I need to make a phone call, it, it terrifies me. And um, it's not actually an uncommon thing among people of my generation. There are a lot of jokes on the internet that millennials are uh, scared of phone calls and doorbells, I swear. I only have doorbell because Rivka, our executive, the executive director, presented one to me. <laughs> nobody, nobody really knows why that, that is the case, but it is true. These fears are real and very common, but though it seems irrational and, uh, frankly, silly, the underlying fears of my fears are the same as of Moshe. <laughs> fear of not being understood, fear of not having enough skills, and fear of failing a task. When I need to call someone, it's usually something serious. I'm afraid that people won't understand me even though I really care about them and I want to help, but what if I don't have enough skills, either because of a language barrier or because I won't be able to say what needs to be said, and then I will ultimately fail, and that's very embarrassing. 
And now when I see Moshe having the same basic human fears, it gives me comfort. If Moshe was scared of failure but wasn't afraid to express these fears to God, God's self, how much more so I should be free to accept my fears and thus take control of my life. If Moshe did not fail to bring people out of Egypt into promised land, maybe I can make a phone call. Rabbi Michel Misagi says, excuses often roll off the tip of our tongue. We are too tired, frazzled, insecure, unsure, overwhelmed, or distracted. Showing up emotionally and physically when we are called upon counts for a lot. We often make excuses. I am too tired. I'll just keep exercising this morning. It's been a long week. Maybe nobody will miss me at tonight's minion at the shul. Or it's been months since I raised my voice to my child. She probably forgot, and I don't need to apologize. And though all these excuses are based on real fears, we have the power to overcome them. Like Moshe, we too worry that those who deep, we deeply love and care about won't ever really get us, that we aren't good enough, or are lacking in some way, or that we won't be able to fulfill our unique destiny in life. We relate to Moshe's pain. We may have even peered down his path. This week's portion calls each of us to metaphorically hold Moshe's hand and the hand of every other fellow human being as he and they and we try to conquer our great fears. Thank you so much for coming to the service today. I'm wishing you Shabbat Shalom. And remember, if I gave you a phone call, it means that I overcame one of my greatest fears. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom.